Hi everyone. In this episode, we will talk about how to choose your growth chamber. Welcome back. In this episode, we'll talk about choosing your growth chamber. Now, since we are do-it-yourselfers, a lot of us probably go to Home Depot or we go to Walmart looking for a growth chamber. But what should you look for? What should you not buy? And what should you buy? Now, this is what I see on most do-it-yourselfers use. Does this look familiar? Yes, they use this tub, which is from Home Depot. And they like it because it's designed to be outdoors and it's UV. But there are some problems with this growth chamber if we did use it. So most of them will drill holes in the top and put their plants in here and put their missing nozzles on the inside of this chamber. But right away, I have no idea if this plastic is actually safe to be used. I don't know what toxins reside in here because this was not designed for plants. It's designed for holding tools, basically. So even when I take this off, I can smell the plastic. So that will concern me that if I use this to grow, what type of toxins am I exposing my family to? There's a big issue with this growth chamber. Well, first, we're talking about the good thing. The good thing is that this chamber is black. That means that it is opaque. Light cannot enter the growth chamber. We don't want to use a growth chamber where light can enter because then that will promote algae growth and plus roots do not fare well when they are exposed to light. Okay, so the problem with this is that if you notice, the bottom of this chamber, there are many crevices and sharp edges and indentations. All these crevices are home or can wreak havoc for the growth of pathogens and bacteria. That means that your plants, your health, your plant health is in danger in such a chamber because there's no way that you can clean all this out there's so many crevices. So this is a big issue with, this is another big issue with these um, chambers. Also too, these chambers were not designed to be constantly wet inside. So what will happen is, is that based upon the type of plastic is used, um, it bacteria itself will start to develop in the material of your plastic. So that's another reason why it's not good to use this a tub or a plastic container that you buy off the shelf. Now, when you choose a grow chamber, you want to make sure that it is deep enough to house your roots. If your plants will mostly be short life, around 60 days or less, you can grow it in a chamber where the depth is no more than 12 inches. However, if you're planning to grow plants that take longer to maturity, like months, then you want to choose a chamber that is 18 inches to 24 inches deep to be able to house your roots. So the chamber that we had earlier was plenty good for plants that needed to reach maturity pass that takes that, that, that will take more than 60 days since the chamber was pretty, pretty deep. So keep that in mind when you choose a grow chamber, the depth of that chamber. You want to make sure that the roots stay suspended during its full grow cycle. Now we already, we already mentioned that we want the grow chamber to be opaque. We don't want sunlight to enter the chamber. That just caused many problems that you don't want to deal with. One is algae, plus roots are not devised to the sunlight. Plus roots do not fare well when exposed to light. Remember, the roots are in the ground, in the dirt, protected from any light. They stay in the dark. So keep them 
in the dark. Another thing to consider when you have a grow chamber is how are you going to drain the chamber? Now, the one that we had before, the black one, it had so many crevices in it. There were many crevices where the water would have just stayed stagnant and would have been very difficult to drain it completely during each spray cycle. We don't want any stagnant water in the unit. We want all of it to drain out completely so that it stays active and moving in your system. And that way your plants will stay healthy. Another issue about your grow chamber is its weight. If you're planning to grow plants bigger, taller, that will be suspended for many months, you want to make sure that your chamber has enough weight to support the canopy of your plants. If not, have a way to anchor down your grow chamber so that it does not tip over when plants reach their full maturity. Mobile. You want, if you want your plants to be mobile or portable, make sure you choose a chamber where that you can do that, where it's easy to place it in different areas. If your uh, chamber is devised in such a way that it comes in too many pieces, then it'd be very difficult for you to make it portable or mobile. So if you are concerned about that, think about that. If you want to, think about how you might want to transport your grow chamber if it calls for. Maybe you want to transport it to a um, farmer's market, or maybe you're planning to take a long trip and you want to take your aeroponic system with you. So think about that if you want your system to be portable. Now, this is another issue if you are using your grow chamber is that most chambers, we will drill holes in the lid of the tub or container to be able to hold our plants. Some lids are either too thin or too flimsy to be able to do that. So think about that too. How will you support your plants in this chamber? Is it strong enough to um, be able to put holes in it to support your plants? And also too, is it going to block sunlight from entering it? If, if, it's a lid, it's, if your lids are clear, then you definitely do not want to choose that as a grow chamber. Now, you heard it here first, and I discovered this over eight years ago about grow chambers for aeroponic systems. We have to remember that we are trying to mimic the soil. Soil temperatures stay pretty much consistent between 50 and 60 degrees in most areas. That means that when there is dramatic changes in the soil, plants suffer. They sometimes actually die. So how can we mimic that in our aeroponic system? Hi everyone. Thank you for watching part one. Stay tuned for part two, same time, same place. So please subscribe right here now on Aeroponics DOI and let us take you where no gardener has gone before.